Hello, everybody. So today I have two guests. Man, I'm, I'm going. This will be my third interview where I have two guests at the same time. So yeah. I'm on a winning streak right now. <laughs> <laughs> so today this is going to be episode six for the New Earth versus the New World Order. And I'm, I'm tr the reason why I have these two guys on is because I would like to get their opinions, you know, just from a outside looking in because they interview so many people on their youtube channel and they have a wealth of information of what's going on nowadays with the new earth and versus the new world order and the other thing i would like to talk about is that they are planning a trip may 5th if i am may, may 2nd through the 5th in grafton okay. illinois yeah okay and we're going to get into that and talk about that more so i'm pretty excited because this is good information because it's coming from not a hypnosis practitioner or anything like that. I don't know what y'all do on the side, but for the most part, I think right now you just do the video collaborations. You used to do construction, correct? I used to, yeah. Yeah. So this would be very interesting to get an outside opinion coming in. And I'm very excited. So this would be episode six. And if you watching this on YouTube channel, the best way to experience this video, if you're new to the channel, is to go to the playlist and just look for the playlist of New Earth versus the New World Order. And this would be episode six. So you, the best way that I'd like to watch is in order because you'll see connections between all of them. So start at episode one and work your way down. And if this is the podcast, all it is is uh, New Earth versus New World Order. And just look for that tagline. And for first topic we're going to talk about is your event that's coming up. Uh, Secret Space Force, correct? Secret Space Conference, actually. Um, you know, it's based around the Secret Space program. We've had, that's honestly, Aaron and I both kind of, uh, we, we I, don't, I don't know how to describe this, but we both were fascinated by the Secret Space program, I guess. When Corey Good came out with his testimony, I think a lot of people's jaws were on the ground. There was a lot of new information. And it was one of the things that sparked the podcast. You know, we, Aaron and I met at a conference and then we ended up, Aaron had the idea to do the podcast. And here we are, what, two and a half years later. I can't even believe it, to be honest. Yeah, I know, right? And we had... Uh, you know, we've since interviewed whistleblowers um, of the SSP experiencers, just all sorts of guests with great information. And it's we it's, we were asked to attend a few conferences and then we quickly realized, like, holy cow, we could put one of these on ourselves like this isn't mm -hmm. this isn't that difficult. Well, it can be. But, you know, after being a part of a few conferences, you see the you see the do's and the don'ts. Right. You know what not to do. And you, you, you learn from other people, right? So we learned um, a lot just from attending conferences. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I wish they would do this or, uh, you know, oh, this is a really cool thing. Yeah. And kind of figured it out. Perfect. And there. this would be my third conference that's similar to this realm. So I'll, I did two things at ESETI and that was it. So this would be my third one. So I'm pretty excited. Oh, nice. Yeah. So it's, it's May 2nd through the 5th. Um, I know it's a little ways out, but it's, you know, gives people plenty of time to save and it's hopefully past all this chaotic travel mandates and all that stuff. Hopefully we get past that and things settle a little bit. So it's easier for people to make it there, but yeah, it's, it's based around the secret space program, but that's just, that's not just it. There's going to be some QHHT healers. There are some other people who are going to be, it's going to be pretty well-rounded but it's based around the secret space program. We, what we want to do is build a case for it because there's a lot of good information out there that I think a lot of people don't really quite aren't, aren't aware of. And it gives people a chance to meet these people themselves and hang out with them and talk to them because a lot of these people have wild claims, right? Some of these are very, you know, out there. So it's nice whenever you get to meet a person and pick up on their energy and feel into them and, and get to know the person and see where they're coming from. And you're not just listening to them talk on the camera. So it's going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to it. And what are some of the, I, I'll have a link uh, in the description of your event, but what are some of the people that will, that's going to be attending or speaking at this event? I can share my screen actually, if you, if you want to let me do that. And yeah. I yeah. That's, I that's just, easier. So here it is four days, 12 speakers, $444. That includes the meal plan. So that's breakfast, lunch, and dinner buffet Monday through Thursday. 
it is during the week. It's not a weekend conference. Um, but there's plenty of time to plan for that if you do want to make it. And uh, it's really a great deal, to be honest. It, the ticket includes everything. That, um, that is a great deal because that includes both, all, four, uh, all three meals as well. That's it. That's an all-inclusive price. Everything that's going to be available there is under that price, and there's no extra charges. Um, food, including you know, including food, and yeah. then there's a live stream pass for the people who can't make it for one eleven. And then now for hotels, I see that you have something for hotels, so it's one nineteen is a recommended lodging for one of the right. So there's like seventy some odd rooms on site, and that's a one nineteen a night. It's a flat rate, and then there's a uh camping right next door walking distance i think it's like 20 dollars a night to camp and there all those details are below and then there's also airbnbs and hotels like five miles away in town there's plenty of options for people wow nice uh yeah. have you been to this place once before or i have it's absolutely beautiful as soon as i pulled onto the property it was just like i got chills actually i was like this <laughs> is the place this is the place uh, we, Aaron and I, we found that we looked at another place and we were both like, eh, <laughs> it will right, work. Right. Yeah. It would have worked, but it was, it wouldn't have, we, it wasn't the feeling we were going for or the vibe we were going for. Exactly. And, and, and this is pretty cool. So y'all put this event on together, correct? Y'all, y'all both by yourselves together. Yeah. yeah there's I, really, there's, there's really no one else involved. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's some friends who've helped, like, helped me, give me some pointers on the website and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, we're doing this, trying to do this on our own. And, you know, obviously, we're going to need help along the way. But I'm um, interested. I'm interested in learning how, how can I help? Well, we'll, <clears throat> we'll talk. But anyway, Perfect. you were asking about the speakers. So every yes. speaker we've had as a guest on the show, Tony Rodriguez, he's a whistleblower. Um, Jackie Pierce is his co-host on his show, Talked with Tony, and she's an experiencer. And actually, one of her her episodes is one of my favorites. She has an incredible story. Uh, Daryl James as well. We did a two-part episode with him. And I mean, just the details, the recall that these people have is just mind-blowing. And it's it's really fascinating. And if all this stuff is true, like <laughs> we are so we are so in the dark here on this planet, you know. Um, we got Suzanne Spooner, who you know, Mark uh, Demisio. He's had some experiences. Uh, Diego Garcia and Off Planet. Everybody and, knows. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. For the people that are uh, listening and watching this, so S Suzanne Spooner, j just keep that in mind. She was on episode one. So if you remember her video from episode one, um, she, she in that video, I talked about how she... Um, had a client and you could point out which one it was th that the client that had uh, past life regression into he had the recall memory of this uh, secret space program right that's well. this guy right next to her here in the middle of the okay screen. that's mark mark demisio yeah okay perfect right. so he, they're gonna actually be doing um something together they're gonna be presenting together uh it's gonna be really interesting i'm, I'm looking forward to that Laura Eisenhower, we all know who she is. She's uh, she's actually become a good friend of ours over time. Uh, Dan, Dan Cooper is another guy we've recently been talking with. We did three episodes with him. He's got a lot of great information. Rebecca Rose, we've had her on. She's got a lot of great information. Jermaine Chavez, if you aren't aware of him, he's just like uh, un. What would you? How would you describe him, Aaron? Unfiltered, <laughs> an unfiltered <laughs> truther. He, unfiltered truther light warrior right explicit <laughs> yeah it can be very explicit right so you can handle but he's that. but the reason he's on there is because he might be one of the most passionate people i know he's on this on guy. the subject he does a lot of good work just in general though like tying in information and, and kind of presenting it like on social right. media and then he does his own he does uh he'll, he'll just go live all the time on social media and YouTube and, and just kind of like, <laughs> he right. does these really long tour, like sometimes even three hour lives. That Is he, uh, he experienced something or he's like a researcher? He's basically like a researcher. He's more of a researcher, but he, he's just really passionate and really good at researching and tying things together. Right. And he, you know, he dropped out of school early, but then he ended up teaching himself like physics and and all, and all kinds of stuff. And he, uh, and he's, he's, 
smarter than he gives himself credit for. And he's uh, uh, he connects a lot of dots and he's just laid back and as real as it gets. And it's kind of it's entertaining watching him because both on, on rants, which are <laughs> yeah amazing and entertaining at the same time. Nice, yeah, nice. But, but he's been following the topic since what 2012 and he probably knows it better than anybody so actually i think even longer than that he's been been in it for longer than us yeah so we're gonna give him a chance to uh get up there and just you know give his two cents and then um kate buckley uh known otherwise known as a kate awakening we've she's a good friend we've had her on she's a a hypnotherapist also qhht i heard I heard. And and she she has a very unique approach on hypnosis and and she she's very good at like pointing out the dangers in it because you can you can ask leading questions and mm-hmm. and some some practitioners if you don't have experience you could you might be drawing information out of somebody that might not be accurate and it's a very real thing so she's going to come and and basically lay it out like the importance and the do's and don'ts if you are going to go into a session what you need to know what you need to look for that type of stuff um because that because i mean i i see that being a trend people are going to be seeking out these practitioners more and more as people are remembering stuff and having recall and she does other great work as well i'm sure it's going to be a well-rounded does she still have her youtube channel it got taken down um, but she, you know, she's been on a little bit of a hiatus, but she'll be coming back doing her. She, I, she has plans on coming back and, you know, getting back into everything. But uh, I can't blame her. Sometimes it's nice to take a break, you know? Yes, yes. After this, uh, I'll take a little bit of a break myself. <laughs> a lot right. of deadlines coming up. <laughs> and then Johan Fritz and, and his wife, uh, Jody Reynosa, they they both have experiences together memories of being on the same missions together uh their story is absolutely incredible johan's alone is just mind-blowing and and he has probably more information stored in his head than anybody i mean it's crazy but yeah it's going to be awesome we're really looking forward to it it's going to it's a great lineup and it's, it's going to be a lot of fun and we have lala deaton if you guys know who she is she's a an amazing musician. She's going to be playing music, and Ivan Teller. He's an ET channeler, and he'll be do uh, he'll be there doing some private sessions. And uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. And these are your vendors, correct? And these are yeah, these are just vendors. Hopewell Farm, uh, Space Force News, Alara, and uh, Loyal to the Foil. They'll be there with uh, with their booth. And then Christina Lee Dobbs. If anybody knows who she is, she is Organite. Uh, she'll be there selling some Organite. And then uh, we got Divine Sovereign Beings down here, Jason, Alexis, um, if you guys know who they are, uh, Jason from Cosmic Origins, Alexis from Ascension Diaries, they'll have their booth, they're going to be selling some local stuff from Sedona, and then um, Omnia, well, um, maybe, if, if we're lucky, we might get Tim from, to come over from London, uh, but um, he'll be there selling the, the patches, Hopewell Farm CBD, Eric will be there, and the rest of them are local vendors, so... Perfect. Right. So I think that's about it. And then all the information's on the website for anybody who wants it. Um, the yeah. interesting, the one interesting thing is, is that, uh, you know, we've already been getting some shit about this conference. People say that we're only putting it on for money and this and that. And, and we're pretty sure somebody reported this shirt on Teespring and Teespring removed this shirt now. So, oh, no. <laughs> so we got to re-upload the shirt, but uh, it's to be expected, you know. Well, today, anyway, yeah. today it was infringing on someone's copyrights or something? Well, well, Teespring has an uh, option where it, you can report an item. You don't have to have a reason. You can just report it. And enough people report it, uh, I guess it can get removed. So. so they just automatically remove stuff if it gets reported a certain amount of times? or I, I don't know. Not, that shirt isn't violating any anything. <laughs> no, not yeah. at all. But I can just see somebody getting mad because we've had a in particular individual saying accusing us of just putting this conference on purely to make yeah, money yeah which we, is know, we know literally the exact opposite is the farthest thing from yeah, my mind you know? absolutely it has nothing to do with well so, as well, a well. person that's going to attend and i attend other events i mean for i mean shoot i've attended online events that cost two thousand dollars a thousand dollars for oh yeah things, you know oh yeah this is and this is <laughs> you're charging 444 bucks and this includes meals and so on, and you you get to have it's four days, right? I yeah. mean, it, it's 
I mean, that's a damn good price. I mean, it's going to be, you know, travel and stay, you know, that comes with every conference we've learned, you know, and uh, if you can keep the ticket price, the biggest, the most important thing was including the food because I've paid this much for a ticket and had to pay another $300 for a food package, you know? Yes. So, Let's put it this way. Of all the conferences I've been to, this is on the very low end for what I normally pay for a conference. Like correct. the correct. very, very low, low end. Correct. So it's not, <laughs> not price gouging or, you know, we're not doing this for money. Like conferences aren't cheap to put on, especially if you do it. Uh, no, and then you got, uh, depending on how y'all work it out, you got to take care of the speakers as well. You exactly. Know? Right. Right. Exactly. We're trying, I mean, dude, at this point, we're just trying to break even. Like, and whatever oh, yeah. happens after that is a bonus, but it's, this is like, this is a passion project. This is something like we are f- grateful and fortunate enough to be in a position to be, to even be able to pull something like this off. So absolutely. Is um, this your first one? Yeah, absolutely. It's our first, right. it's our first attempt. So, well, leave a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know if you like what you saw and if you're interested, if you're going if not, if you don't want to leave a comment, you can always send me that email as well. But I do have a couple of questions. So let's say you bring your your loved one. Is there things to do for like if your loved one is not going to the event? Is there things for them to do on the side? Absolutely. So the, I mean, in town. So the Grafton is actually like a tourist town. It's right on the river. It's beautiful. And it, there is, it's five miles away. So if somebody didn't want to hang out at the event, they can go spend all day in town. There's, there's a bunch of stuff to do. There's trails to hike at the conference. There's stuff to do on site that, that doesn't even pertain to the conference. So, uh, yeah, there's plenty to do. There's plenty to do. Perfect. Perfect. And is it far from the airport or anything? An, like it's that? an hour away. An hour from, it's actually 42 miles from St. Louis airport, but it's about an hour drive. Yeah. Okay. It's in the St. Louis metro area on the Illinois side. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So if you ever in, attended the East SETI Ranch event with us, same thing, you go to the airport, rent, rent a car and. Yeah, but it's closer than East SETI is to the Portland airport. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, 42 miles isn't that far, to be honest, uh, from, <laughs> from a major airport. So it gives people an opportunity and it's in the Midwest. So I, I've already had a lot of people that would typically fly, say they're going to drive because it's centrally located. You know, it's not one end of the country. So yeah, there's not a lot of these type of types of conferences in the Midwest. So I, I really like that we're, we're doing it there because everyone that lives in the Midwest, you know, normally like Todd and I are both from St. Louis. Normally we're having to fly to the East or West coast, you know, super far to go to a conference. And this time, you know, everyone that lives, within driving distance can actually drive and makes it cheaper and easier. Perfect. So. Yep, exactly. I checked out the pictures of the, of the place and it looks like a beautiful place. So I love, Super I am very forward to, uh, check let me, out. yeah, let me tell you, man, it's literally gorgeous. Like it's unbelievable. And the, the owner, the lady I've been dealing with, like the, I know it's meant to be because she is awesome. And every single request I've had, her answer is like, do it, do what you want. It's your conference. Like, that's fine. I'm like, yeah, I'm waiting. I was waiting for her to like, come back and say, oh, you can't do that. Or this is going to cost extra. She's, I mean, it was just, she's like, no, yeah, fine. You want that? No, we can do whatever you want. Well, it was, it's amazing. Wow. Like, I, I just couldn't believe it. Every, there was no, no pushback. You that's know? good. That's good. And with that being said, you can do this event again and you know what to expect and know that right. you can work with her again. Right. One at a time, though. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. So the other question would be for the videos that I'm putting together where it's the New Earth versus the New World Order. And then you think any information that would be presented at the conference will be relatable to this subject as well? What's your thoughts oh, I, on that? I can only imagine so. I mean, I, I, I can only imagine because that's you know, we're not just doing this to put the information out there. We're doing this to like basically manifest our positive timeline. We want to, we want to put, put ourselves on the timeline where there is this new earth future. So we're going to, I'm sure that's going to be discussed. There's no way it wouldn't be. Gotcha. Then there you go. And that's why we're having this video collaboration as we speak today. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Well, thank you for having us on by the way, too. 
Yeah. Oh, thank you. No, the honor is all mine. So, and check out their YouTube channel. They have amazing guests. I mean, I was pretty, pretty wild by the guests that y'all have on your channel, you know? Oh, thank you. So I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty, pretty good. <laughs> we are too sometimes we're like i look, we back, too, yeah. <laughs> I look, I look back at our uh history sometimes i'll scroll through it and i'm like i can't even believe that we accomplished it like it's it's surreal sometimes I'm like holy shit and y'all been doing this for two years the podcast almost three years at this right point. february will be three years i think uh, beginning of 2019 is when we started so yeah coming up on three years it, it's wow. been a well congratulations i mean i was I was impressed when I saw it. I was like, man, y'all, y'all get some good names on, on your channel. Thank you. I, yeah, like Tyler said, I don't even know how. We just started it just just to do it, and it just kind of happened. We got we got lucky and, and blessed. And then there's no way I can, I can put it. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, it's been – I mean, it's just been so amazing and so fun uh, to do over the last few years. And we our lives have changed from it completely. And Immensely, yeah. Well, yeah. it's it's kind of like we started it with zero really intentions or anything. We just started it. Well, our intention was just to be a part of all this information and like, you know, stuff we wanted to talk about and get out there to the world in some way. But we didn't really know how to do it or or what to do. And then we just I had the idea for a podcast and we just kind of clicked like, yeah, that's it. That sounds that sounds right. right. I meant like jumped into it. Yeah. Without. I guess I should have said, I meant like we didn't have any expectations. Like, no, we, no. Like, we, we just went in to uncharted territory. We learned everything the hard way, especially on the yeah. tech end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everything we is, just yeah. Slowly learned how to do everything and what to do and uh, self yeah. self taught and whatever. And then it was like the universe had it our, <laughs> it was like the universe had our back because I'm not lying. It was almost like it became effortless. It's like a, well-oiled machine now it's just like somehow or another it's going it takes a lot of work but it's not forced so um and we have sometimes we have amazing guests fall into our lap people recommend people sometimes we got to hunt them down you know if i really want to get somebody on you got to really right that was one of my questions you know like are y'all reaching out to them are they coming to y'all at all? first it was mostly it was basically all us reaching out to people and then and that's just a testament to like the amazing people in this community um, that are like the bigger name people because so many of them, they, they agreed to do it, even though we were this tiny channel that no one's ever heard of at the time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they, they agreed to do it. And then we would, we would uh, just through going to conferences, making friends with people was, you know, how we yeah, had networking, on networking, yeah. just making friends and. And then a lot of those people would have connections to somebody else or be like, oh, you have to have this person on. And, and they would kind of help us get other people. And, and now, now it, got to the, it got to the point where almost just as many people are reaching out to us to ask to be on as we are reaching out to people. So it's right. It's exactly. And it's, yeah, it's it crazy. It's easier. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. It, do it does and it doesn't because sometimes people reach out and you don't know who they are. So that now, like if it's interesting enough, yeah, you kind of have to do your homework and see, and then you can't just have yeah, everybody true. on because it, you just can't. But yeah, um, so it's it's true. it's it's cool because it allows me. It, whenever somebody new shows up and they have new information, I'm like, this is awesome because I probably would have never found them otherwise had they not reached out. So it's super. I think I love it. You know, nice, nice. Thank you very much for joining us, giving us all that wonderful information. I am very excited for the event. I'm looking forward to it. And if you want, we could begin with some questions to pick your brains. Because like I said, with their YouTube channel, they post a lot of interesting information. And then I was telling Tyler and Aaron earlier, before everything got started, that sometimes the guests will say something. And then next thing you know, y'all just like spit out a ton of information on top of that. So I was like, okay, these guys know quite a bit of what's going on out there. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to pick your brain with all that. And also don't forget that they post videos on rumble as well because of the sensitivity of it. And, and you got two good videos up there as well. And I highly recommend you checking those out. And I was pretty, pretty shocked 
by those two guests. I was like, man, that is very impressive. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Some of the stuff it just with YouTube's all regulations now, it's not even worth risking our channel. So we just upload it on right. Rumble. And right. Sometimes actually, or there's, there's three of them that are on Rumble. Four of them now. I think Lori Weiss, she was a, a holistic okay. pharmacist, right? Yeah. Um, and she, yeah, Ken Rolla, which is, um, how would you describe Ken's title? A free energy uh, entrepreneur, um, inventor. Yeah. I don't know, but well, you, you had to take that one over um, there too. Well, no, that one, that one got removed from YouTube for medical misinformation because he has a lot of. That's how we got our warning. Yeah. We yeah, he, on YouTube because of that. <laughs> he has a lot of natural cures and alternative cures, and they work. And, and he, talked, he talked about the jab also, right? Uh, so they the actual, using the actual words. So I think that triggered that triggered the algorithm. Yeah. Um, and then so, obviously you're talking about probably Mickey Willis and Zach Voorhees. So yes, yes, those right. two. yeah. Two, the two new ones. I watched his video, um, his series, and the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic yeah yeah it's so good i try to tell my co-workers to watch it but they're they're too busy so i was like all right <laughs> the right people know. the right people will find it oh yeah oh yeah okay. so the first question would be i don't know which one y'all want to take uh the last uh person i interviewed they kind of went with the definition of the new world order but which one y'all wanted to describe first the new earth like what is your definition of it how do you see it as, or do y'all want to take it from the new world order approach? I, that, that doesn't matter to me, but I'll let Aaron <laughs> take that question. <laughs> start. Uh, Maybe we can start with the new world order, start with the darker stuff, right. and then and then dark the light. The, the <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. That be, dark that's light. better. Yeah, I like that that approach. Okay, well, for me, I always. The easiest way I describe the new world order as from a practitioner, from a QHHT point of view, I always see it as just basic, basic bottom line stuff beyond, you know, uh, evil individuals that are in politics, business, and or just politicians that have evil intentions. I just go beyond that and say the, the bottom, bottom line is just old programming and just negative energies. And that's the bottom line I, I usually go with, but I'm interested to know how you see it. Right. Well, I mean, it's, it's not like, well, people also get, sometimes they get irritated or upset with us when we talk about politics on the show, but we're not talk. what they don't understand is we're not talking about politics. Like when we're talking about it, we're talking about the deep state, the, the cabal, because they they're basically they are the politicians. real system of control they are yeah, the politicians they, so exactly we're not discussing politics we're discussing like okay well for one we're you know showing people what's going on and when we always try and have solutions also like okay how can we manifest a, a positive timeline or whatever but aaron i'll let you run with that question and wait yeah for. um it's wow it's such a big <laughs> topic it's like man where do i start <laughs> um but yeah i like what you said about energy because essentially that's what it is it's it's um we're moving out of the old energy into the new which is which is manifesting the new earth uh the new energy and it's so the old structures that have been on the planet for thousands of years um well it's like well what's what's behind those structures is that just random evil people or uh kind of low vibrational people that happen to get in power that well partly yes but n but really no it's it's really been a spiritual dark energy energetic force that's been behind it for thousands of years that's kind of so to speak infiltrated our planet a long long time ago and um, and there's, and there's, you know, when you get deep down the rabbit hole, there's actual negative ET beings that some, you'll hear people talk about the reptilians or the Draco. Um, they're a part of that and they're kind of, or they were controlling, um, the earth based, the human based, uh, people in power for thousands of years. And it goes all the way back. I mean, this goes back to Babylon, you know, back to Rome and ancient Egypt and, 
Sumeria, and it goes back to the the most ancient times that we we know of. You know, even back to you know Atlantis and the Myria times, uh, ah, really. But okay. um, you know, the mainstream doesn't doesn't want to accept that as real. So it's like, <laughs> all right, well, it, it's you can like documentedly you know look at it. It goes back to Egypt and stuff like that. So, but yeah, it's all these. Um, these people in power that they're basically psychopaths. They're basically um, there's, there's dark entities kind of like ruling through them. Um, and they're puppets, they're, they're bloodlines. And they, and that's why they, they are all, they keep um, their line, their bloodline pure because, you know, they, they believe they're like superior to the rest of the human race. They believe they're basically gods that have the right to rule over us and we're just these worthless cattle essentially that they can do as they wish and um yeah so that's that's their mindset they're basically a cult as well so they they actually have their own strict uh religious beliefs and and that is what most people would think of as like satanic essentially when you look into this like they're basically a satanic cult or some would say a luciferian cult where they they worship the darkness they worship uh you know everything opposed to what we would think of as good <laughs> anti anything anti-life anti-life exactly yeah. to put it simply they're anti-life and um they've infiltrated every area every government uh, you know they're at the top of every institution in society and they have been for a long time unfortunately um and that's whole you know, time <laughs> That's why they've made such an effort to kill off like the native, different native populations of the, of the planet, because those people had this ancient wisdom that, um, and they were, you know, living in tune with nature and with the planet and like keeping it at a higher vibration. So they had to, you know, they had to get rid of that. And you can just see their agendas play out through the ages. And, uh, you know, it's been going on for a really, really long time, and they, they create the wars, they create, they manipulate the whole planet and societies to, to uh, yeah, to war and um, enslave the planet, basically, and feed off of, off of the, our energy, the, the low vibrational energy that they manipulate us to continually, perpetually keep creating for them, and uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. But, you know, now oh, yeah. we're at times where that's all going away, you know, more and more people are waking up. The, the planet and the solar system are moving into a higher vibrational part of the galaxy. And the energy of that alone is uh, raising consciousness and kind of being a catalyst for this awakening. And us starseeds, I believe all, all three of us are, and most of the people who, who are watching probably are, uh, we came to this planet to help with this shift with this awakening to usher in the 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 new earth and the new age um so we're right at the precipice of this old new world order that you know they their their goals for a long time have been to create a one world government uh to enslave the planet more than it already is and uh, you know kill off most of it so it's so we're easier to control and you see all their agendas, like they push towards that. You know, when you look into it, they they all are clearly trying to push to create that, but they're failing. And it's very obvious that they're failing because they they wanted this years and years ago, and uh, they're kind of now really uh, in desperation because they're they're seeing that if they don't make this happen now, they're they're done. So they're kind of throwing out every everything they possibly can, everything but the kitchen sink, you know. Yeah, they're pulling out uh, all the stops to, right now. Yeah, they're making a last ditch effort to in desperation to to manifest this, but it's it's not gonna work because they're already they've already lost. We're just now seeing seeing that play out and we're seeing the manifestation. The chaos that's ensuing is is a part of it, you know. It's it's just uh, the natural moving from that old structure that's crumbling to the new beautiful amazing reality that we're moving into so wow you almost answered all the questions we're almost right. <laughs> that, that is, <laughs> yeah, sorry. there's no way i could have answered that as good as he did yeah that was amazing <laughs> amazing so oh, thank while you. you were speaking you brought up three good questions so this is kind of a new question that is 
added to the list. So do you think with the new world order, do you think they know what's coming? Like the earth changes, the 5D earth? Do you think they know what's happening and they're trying to oh, prevent it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's why that that's why they're acting the way they are, that, and that's why everything is surfacing because like they they can't even afford to hide anymore or be covert about anything. It's like, mm -hmm. like okay, you want to like let's put on a Travis Scott concert and oh, yeah. and have a public oh. sacrificial ritual, satanic ritual, and kill eight people and fuck mm -hmm. everybody, and we'll get away with it. I mean, that's exactly what they just did. Uh they it was did. an energy harvesting event, basically, right. and uh, there was a lot. There, the symbolism was just off the charts in that thing, demonic symbolism. I heard my coworker was telling me something about it, and um, he showed me different pictures. I was like, "Oh, okay." I thought it was just a regular concert, and someone got hurt. That's what I thought. <laughs> no, no, this is showing me all this yeah. stuff, and I was like, "Oh, okay." So there's a little bit more to this. <laughs> there's a lot to it. There's yeah. a, it's a satanic ritual um every way you look at it down to the poster the uh the the flower on the poster that says see you on the other side it's some rare flower but when you read a description of the flower on google whenever it it's like corpse it, something i forgot what it's called but something cor had corpse in the name of the yeah, flower and the so. description says that it smells like uh rotting yeah. flesh yeah Exactly. Riding, so here we have that flower on the poster it, says, see you on the other side. The shirt he was wearing showed literally demons coming through a portal. Right. On, the, on his shirt he was wearing. Right. And then the whole stage was a portal. And then it was the it big the eye portal. of like Moloch or whatever. And Oh, yeah. wow. But it goes on and on. But also, uh, they say that a lot more, there's, they're claiming that more people died than actually eight. But eight is the number we're going to get from the mainstream because for some reason, eight is it was important in their sacrifice and their every ritual. time they use a number there's there and there was eight mm -hmm. flames on the stage and blah 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 mm -hmm. so either way we can go into detail on this but wow um, the whole thing is this doing is a perfect example of them doing ritual. this stuff overtly yeah they don't care anymore it's not like they're not doing this stuff underground in some secret society anymore they're doing it on the world stage and I mean, Travis Scott watched the people die, and he kept going. Kept and, going. and he's and he's off scot free. I mean, he doesn't. He's not going to get charged. They're, they're trying to, but it's not going to happen because it was all planned. It's not like okay. it, it's just like okay, well, we'll we'll entertain them by saying we're going right, to. And if he charges. does get charged, or if he does, he'll fall yeah. out. You know, right. Some elbows then, be but, rubbed or something. But then you have the so when I the video clips I watched of it was like this horrible, horrible frequency that actually makes you sick. I'm like, this is not music. I'm like, they are hypnotizing people, and that frequency was it literally one of the videos made my heart start pounding. I'm not mm. joking. And wow. And people say that people were falling out of cardiac arrest. Well, then we also have this graphene oxide that's allegedly in the jab, and everybody was. Uh, required to be jabbed to go to that con concert mm. so if you're pumping a frequency out that works that affects whatever is in that jab right it could affect something in your body much like we were speculating about the 5g towers putting out a frequency that would just make people drop dead well this could be very similar to something like that i don't know yeah Hmm. Sorry, that, yeah. I know we got off Definitely. topic. <laughs> Everything points to that as well from my, from my research. Right. Yeah, I think they, they like they pumped out a frequency that interacted probably with what's in the jab that caused all these people to to have cardiac arrest or or whatever. And um, and then and then what? Trav didn't he like tell people to rush the, the stage or something? He like encouraged. Yeah, they, they was it was so multi layered. Trampled, and that's how a bunch of people died. Yeah, people were trampled. So, yeah, at the end of the conference, our conference, at the end of the concert, they were showing helicopter footage. And I swear there were, there was a bunch of black, look what looked like body bags. And they were, they were trying to ride them off as trash bags. But at that point, it had already been deemed a crime scene. So they couldn't even clean up the concert because it had, it's somewhere along the line. Uh. Like, this is a, this is a crime scene. We had to shut down, shut this down and bring the officials in. But wow. there yeah. it's it's terrible. Anyway, sorry, we got off topic there. But no, that's no. a perfect it, example of what they're doing right now overtly because 
they have to, they don't have a choice to, they're trying to get as much energy this from is, us that they can. And this is weeks after that Alec Baldwin uh, accident, which was not, no, clearly not an accident to me. Well, that, uh, that, that, another one. that is one of the questions, like what are some of the things they're trying to do, you know, to, to stop the progression of it, you know? Well, that uh, apparently the lady that was shot was, um, the wife of one of the Clinton's lawyers. Mm -hmm. So maybe she had information on the Clintons that, or maybe they had like caught wind that she was going to blow the whistle or try something and yeah. it wasn't even worth it. So, and it's, there's, there's all, everything's astrologically aligned. All these, all these public murders like that usually yeah. happen in key locations that would spill blood into the ley lines uh, that nothing's by accident. So I'm sure uh, with the location, in the, the location, the people involved, the day, the time, everything was probably no accident at all. Yeah. And, and I remember, remember the Vegas shooting years ago? Yeah. That, Vegas? that was like the same thing. It was like a mass ritual down to the location, like you said, the dates. Um, yeah. It was like, this was just like another one of those, basically. And a whole right. bunch of people died. Uh, terror, you know, like the energy of all that. It's, yeah, it's like these things are planned. They plan these things. If you, you know, I just watched this movie called Under Silver Lake. Um, somebody recommended it to me. Underneath, it's, under, I think it's under, yeah, Under Silver Lake, something like that. But it's, it perfectly, it's a weird, trippy movie, but it lays out what their, their agenda down to details that you probably don't want to know, but it's, it'll, it's mind blowing. It, it talks about how everything is in code, every movie, every song, every billboard, everything is like code for the elites, for some like Illuminati thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. And this guy ends up figuring out that there's there's this band, this really popular band called Jesus and the Brides of Dracula. And they had music. They had they were like the most popular band at the time. And there was codes in the music. Well, it turns out that the, the artists didn't even write the three songs that had the codes in them. They were handed to him by the producer, said, put these songs out. And they were his only three songs that actually made it public and got or made it big and got on the charts. There were songs that he didn't even write. Somebody else wrote them and they were pushed by the producers or whatever because they had a subliminal message in it. Uh, the message ended up leading this guy to an underground uh, bunker beneath the hills of Hollywood which ended up not, he thought it was a bomb shelter, ended up being what the elites called or say the Satanists call an ascension chamber where they would, where they, they, they think that they're going to ascend and mm -hmm. like their own version of ascension. And yeah. they would put these people in the ascension chamber and pour concrete around it and let them, they would have to live out their life in this ascension chamber. And it's the craziest thing, but it's like, like burying I'm, them alive essentially. Yeah. But I'm telling you, there's so much disclosure in this movie like all the all the popular songs that are that are fed to the public, like all the popular songs that we know by all these artists, like their most famous songs weren't even written by them. It was written by like somebody else and given to them and said, uh, you put this song out or we take away your label. Oh, right. oh I know that happens all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. But the yeah. movie, the movie is incredibly it's it's just littered with disclosure. What is okay. it called again? Uh Under Silver Lake. Under Silver Lake. It it's came trippy. Out in 2018. It's trippy and it's hard to watch since at some parts, but man, stick through to the end. It's like every mm. you don't know what's, what's happening. It, what's it on? Uh Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Definitely check but, that out. I mean, the guy like he like he starts questioning things. He's like, Why is this blocked out on Google Earth? Like, and so he went to the site and like he found like it's just crazy. It's it's really cool. And it's under the Silver Lake. It's a 2018 film. Yeah, under the Silver Lake. Yeah, that's it. Okay, interesting. I anyway some of the information. Yeah, no, it's it's <laughs> it's a great example. If anybody wants to know how they operate, that's it. That movie tells all. So perfect. yeah, everything we just talked about is kind of like perfect examples of the cabal or the deep state um, in plain sight. The things they they do these things in plain sight especially nowadays because they're so desperate and it's like they can't afford to be subtle anymore. So that like right now we're seeing it, you know, every, it's like every other day, it seems like there's some, some new thing they're doing. Right. And, uh, 
Yeah, it's it. That's a really good sign, in my opinion. You know, with you know, everyone's freaking out about the jab and the mandates and blah blah oh, yeah. blah. You know, a everything. Lot of people yeah, waking it's, up. it's all exactly. It's all terrible. It yeah, I agree. But to me, that's a really good sign. We're seeing that because that means they're on their last legs. They wouldn't be doing things. They wouldn't be going this hard and and this desperate if if they weren't, you know on their last legs like they wouldn't be we, we wouldn't be seeing it you wouldn't be seeing all these people waking up waking up well um, and i do this. i do want to add to that aaron because a lot of people don't understand it they can't wrap their head around the fact that why are so many people dying if this is a good thing why are we why are people losing their lives why are people getting yeah. sick yeah well, that is way, one of the questions yeah here's here's the way i see it so Let's just pretend there was three options, like uh, which I've heard. I've heard this when I was listening to a channeler on YouTube, I think. Maybe it was Ivan Teller. I don't know. But it was information that came through that got me thinking. He said there was three options that were to be decided upon, basically. It was the solar event, a major asteroid impact, or the virus. All three of them would have led, would have been a catalyst for an awakening. Mm-hmm. Um, and apparently they, after review, they decided that all of them were going to have mass casualty, but the virus was going to have the least amount yeah. of casualties, no matter how you look at this transition, there's going to be mass casualties, but yeah. we get the least casu- casualties with this. So yeah. if, and I, heard, I don't know if that's true, but yes, yes. In a way, uh, in episode three, I interviewed Sarah and. And we talked multiple times, and she has even confirmed that that uh, we're on the easiest timeline out of the timelines. Like this is the easiest one. And when she said that, I was like, "Wait a minute, this is the easiest one." <laughs> right. Like yeah. I hate to see the other ones, you know. And this was when everything was happening. You know, everything was getting shut down. You know, everybody w- was in fear, and you had to wear your mask and so on. So it's like, and she's like, "Yeah," and and she's talked about and she says yeah we're actually doing pretty good with everything they're actually pretty impressed with us i was like oh okay so (laughs) yeah to confirm you know that 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 is true because she's gotten it in her sessions multiple times yeah yeah it's interesting i I definitely think that's the case i mean it's not a lot of the soul a lot of the the people who are dying on on a soul level they agreed to that to be a part of the awakening and to help with it. And then yeah. they can also help once they get to the other side. You got to remember, like, beings, just because when they die doesn't mean they can't help anymore. Like, they can help from the other side as well. If not, and Dolores more can. powerful. If not, more so, exactly. Right. And, well, yeah, Dolores Cannon talks about that. Exactly. Yeah. Well, think about an elderly person when they're at their, on, on their, at their last days. When they're in their last days, they're not of service to anyone. Um, they're not of service to themselves, to their family. Um, they're just kind of going through the motions. There's no way that soul is, is going to be able to affect anything at this point here on earth. So yeah. when, when one of our elderly passes, um, you can bet, get, you can bet that not, you know, not, I can't say this for everybody, but they're going to go and they're going to be able to help their family and this ascension in ways that they could never even have dreamt of being here on earth. Their mission was done. You know, it's time to go. And then even the, even the people that are dying young, you know, maybe on some level, this was all, everything is ex- happening exactly how it's supposed to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Multiple sessions. It has been said that everything has a plan. There's nothing that was not planned. Right. So it, remi- uh, it reminds me of Dolores Cannon. She's even admitted um, saying that, you know, my time is coming to an end. I feel like I can do so much more work on the other side and I can be a better service on the other side. Right. Before she left. Exactly. (laughs) I definitely, I I believe that. So you mentioned Atlantis and Lemuria, a lot of the stuff, you think a lot of the stuff happened before then or after? Mm, During. During. That's a good question. Um, (laughs) I've heard different People say, say both, you know, people say, oh, the, the evil infiltrated in Atlantis. Uh, and that's where it started. And I've heard people say, oh, it came like 500 million years ago or however many millions of years ago, way before even those times. 
Um, so I don't know. I honestly don't know. All I know is that it's been here for a really long time. And I would say at least, at least it's been here as long as Atlantis and Lemuria. Um, mm -hmm. And it seems like Atlantis was the, this because it seems like there were two different societies. So there was Lemuria and then there was Atlantis and they kind of, there's different information of that as well as, oh, did they crop up at the same time or was, you know, a lot of people say Lemuria was here first and then Atlantis came along later. Again, I don't know. Right. But all I know is I'm pretty sure they both existed and Atlantis was the one that got corrupted if it wasn't corrupted from the start. Um, and they Atlantis warred against Lemuria and that's what caused them to sink and that's what caused the, the destruction of it. And um, a lot of beings apparently went under, fled underground into hollow earth to escape destruction and, and continue living on there and um some uh so I, i'm not sure if some stayed on the surface or came up from hollow earth to the surface and then that's you know the bloodlines that continued on um as the the cabal that we have now but yeah i i do know i mean there's just so much evidence so much that there was super advanced civilizations long before there should be anything you know that mainstream yeah, yeah was, perfect perfect obviously you know well and uh those were those are all remnants i mean the great pyramid the pyramids and the sphinx and you know those are remnants from that time as well i believe and mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then to go back and answer your question about do you think the darkness was here at that time or you know whatever you however I, I you think it was yeah but so I've read, so have you read The Ancient Secrets of the Flower of Life? Um, have either of you read you that? No, I haven't actually read it yet. Lomvalo Melchizedek. So it, get, it gets yeah. into all that. Mm -hmm. and it, But what's interesting about it is I just don't know about the information because it's a little different than what we hear about some other accounts of Lumeria and Atlantis back then. But they say that Lumeria was here before Atlantis. Uh, and it, it, that, and yeah. it existed between it was uh, Hawaii and Easter Island, basically. And mm -hmm. if you look on the map, you can literally see a sunken island chain mm -hmm. uh, on a topographical map. You can see that, that all these islands were once islands, right? These land masses were once islands. They say this is Lumeria. They had foresight. They had technology. They knew that it was sinking. So yeah. they fled. All the Lumerians fled to Atlantis according okay. to this according to this right uh, it wasn't it didn't have anything to do with a war which is interesting because there's a totally different yeah i it's it's interesting how uh, like i've heard i've, multiple I've heard multiple areas exactly mm -hmm. and, and it's hard to know what's actually true right and then yeah. and they they specifically said that atlantis in this book they specifically said bermuda triangle area um which i've heard but then i've also heard antarctica i think it was kind of global but I've also heard, yeah, the, the whole globe was actually Atlantis. It wasn't just one. Right. So the, and, then, yeah. and, then it and then it explains that. So they were actually like living as beautiful, like advanced, unified uh, societies, civilization. And then literally like one day, like reptilians landed and like mm. took over a part of the island. And but it was a free will planet for, and they couldn't they were actually like by some law weren't even allowed to like say they couldn't say it was because everything was free will free will so yeah. they came and they were like cordoned off and and like it, developing their technologies and everything on one half of this island of atlantis and they ended up basically destroying the island with their own technology and then it, in that book they say that all the disappearances in the bermuda triangles because that technology sank but it was never turned oh, off still there to the and it was like yeah. beaming something up that was creating like a portal or whatever mm -hmm. and and then they claimed that it was finally shut off in 2012 so, oh, really? so it's no longer a threat but Hopefully. who knows <laughs> and then they, but they said that all the people all the people from atlantis then fled to egypt because there was another known Mm -hmm. people there another known civilization and then all of our pharaohs and all the elites with the long elongated skulls and everything, they were all from, the priests they were all from atlantis yeah and 
the story and then they were and then there's a whole controversy because they came with basically like this new religion and all the locals were they were worshiping like a hundred gods they had a god for everything and yeah. then they came in trying to teach like a one source creator and they were actually overthrown by the locals and and actually murdered in, in one case because they they didn't like that they were coming and trying to change their religion and right. there was all this this whole story but uh that's that's one book you know <laughs> yeah so all that was in one book yeah oh wow that was all from the uh ancient secret of the flower of life yeah, yeah the, the only thing that i'm i would say i'm certain of is that there were whether it was the reptilians that were around i do think they were most likely around then uh there was an evil that was around then that continues to this day mm -hmm. that is that we're just now seeing for the first time since they've been to this planet uh losing their power and and going away um and their their empire crumbling you know so we're living in literally i would say the most exciting times uh, definitely of this planet and many people say of the of our galaxy and some people say of the universe like there's i've heard you know there's this an yeah. immense number of et races literally here to watch what's unfolding because it's never happened Correct. Yep. Ever in the history of the universe right now so you know what's funny is ivan cool. ivan teller said i loved how he put it um because so many people are like wanting off earth right now they hate it they just want to go back home or whatever and i think it was it wasn't him that said it. it was somebody who was channeling he's like he's like he goes you guys are crazy he goes you guys are basically living in disneyland you have no yeah. idea how exciting like they're like it's boring sometimes up here like it's like exciting on earth like it's like the only place you can do any of the any of the things you're allowed to get away with you can't do right. it anywhere else like earth is like extremely unique right right and yeah uh, and he's like, you guys are basically living in Disneyland. Like, take advantage of it while you're there. You know? Yeah, many, and many other people talk about the, just the fact that our planet uh, is, like, one of the most beautiful planets out there because of the nature. Um, and, like, Alex Collier talks about that. And he says, our planet's a, it's an O2 planet, so an oxygen-based. And he says, most most planets in the universe are hydrogen based and they're and just the mm -hmm. nature of that makes it a much duller less diverse less beautiful place so uh and the o2 planets are much more like that and he says oh, earth is actually like earth is apparently one of the most beautiful uh planets and not just nature but also you know we have the most different uh races and and diversity and and our human and the human population here as well and then and then even on a soul level like apparently we have the the most diverse you know uh from from ascended masters you know super high level souls ancient souls well, and then to like you know very new you know and everything in between that are and, incarnated on the planet right now so yeah and apparently a lot of ets are impressed ETs. with us yeah like, we have all, all the inner earth beings and ets too like you have all that well, I, what I mean is, they're impressed with humans because of what of we're, they were because we're able to survive on a poison planet. Yeah, they, yeah. they don't understand how we can uh, live in a on a planet where every our our food, our water, our air is poisoned, and we can still yeah. essentially thrive if we want to. Like it, it's like, and that's why a certain a lot of a lot of we're YouTube like one of the most resilient races ever, yeah. and right. amazing in their eyes, like how we are able to survive all of that and thrive in it still yeah 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 because like one of the conversation was like since they're at a higher vibration they're more sensitive and receptive to those you know chemicals and energies that are out mm -hmm. there so like for them it'll tear them tear them up yeah and it'll change them whereas us like we can do certain things and yeah it'll affect us in the long run but for the short run we, we even think nothing about it we'll just act like nothing's happening mm-hmm Yep. but we're transforming that anyway just us being here you know we're, we're transforming it and, and that we're able to exist in it to transform it because like they they can't like like you said they can't come in here it would, it would take them out um and they can't really affect truly affect change like we can't be incarnated here that's why we had to incarnate um so like what i've heard is only like the the strongest souls incarnated here so all of us we were we were the strongest souls and um 
and then the human genetics, like we talked about, are, you know, we're, we're, we have 22 different race genetics in us from different races oh. doing that over, over many thousands of years. Um, and but like one big like happy gumbo. Well, it's what happened is they, they all put the best of their own genetics into us. So we're, we're the accumulation of the best of 22 different races genetics. So that's, that's why. So. Right. And something else to remember too, is like what, what, what we're seeing right now happen has happened before. And, and yeah. it's the, at the end of every civilization at the, at the end of it, before the end of, before the fall of any major civilization, there's always war, chaos, mm -hmm. all of it. It's just like, it's just part of the cycle. So this war, everything we're seeing right now is kind of natural. It's to be expected. It's not, there's no way around it. But where we, where we went wrong in the past is that, so like Atlantis, for example, like they were a super advanced, highly technological race, but that doesn't mean that they were spiritual. And, Correct. They, and like that's what like, one thing I was reading said that they they may have very well been a very egotistical race and they were like all in their greed and power and this and that even though they were advanced and they had abilities that we could only hope to have they weren't really spiritually mature their technology um, outweighed the spirituality outweighed, yeah and that's what a lot of people I was calling here again he talks about that he's like when a race is technology grows way faster than their spirituality is when they they usually destroy themselves and and or become a danger to the greater um you know galaxy Aaron, i just had an epiphany because you said that so yeah. oh. so here we are mad this whole time that we're not getting disclosure but if we got disclosure in the 40s and 50s when they knew all this shit we weren't spiritually ready and we would have collapsed so yeah, in, a, in a way in a way, by them suppressing everything, allowed us to become spiritually mature enough to even get to this point, almost like it was all planned that way. And I yeah. would like to yeah. add to your theory, because you're a fan of Dolores Cannon, correct? Both of y'all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Huge. I forgot which book it was. I don't know if it's Convoluted Universe 3 or 4, but it's one of them. I don't think it's two. But one of the interesting things that I always thought, <clears throat> because you mentioned the 40s and 50s, but like with jfk so there's multiple timelines there's a timeline where he survived he was not assassinated he survived but one of the things that he was about to do was disclose ets and so on which yeah. everybody would think oh yeah that's great but what happened was like just like how you were saying the civilization was not ready for that information and we wind up destroying ourselves in that timeline mm -hmm. so timeline has changed now it's a different timeline and it's to keep us from ascending too fast and too soon and too erratic. Right. Plus, our systems need to collapse as well. And if it's too much at once, it's it would be chaotic. Yeah. And but that this is a perfect example of us finally being at a place where we might be spiritually mature enough. There, there's an awakening happening this time around that didn't happen in the past. And that's why we win this time. Exactly. Nailed it. Yeah. yeah. But I, that's really, and I had not thought of this whole time. I've been pissed off because they've been hiding all this technology from us for decades. But now it's like, well, they like, if they, they have, man, it doesn't like excuse, you know. Right. The right. That they, <laughs> they, <it's not laughs> right. That they did that. But at the same time, it's almost like it wasn't meant to happen yet. It wasn't the right time. Right. Yeah. Because of all that. And I've been told that. And if you mentioned Atlantis, I don't know how much uh, if on Guardians of Magic is my other YouTube channel. So Guardians of Magic is where all that ancient information is, Atlantis, Lemuria, ancient Egypt. So one of the things I always thought was pretty cool, and even my client said something as well. And you mentioned, you know, there was in a way in those times disclosure, there was, you know, ETs living among us, you know, visiting us and so on but one of the things that happened even in ancient egypt times was that they uh it's kind of like they were blamed for everything as well you know like how come you're not making me live longer or how come you're not helping me out you're this advanced being you know and, and then they the human civilization at that time got corrupt 
and then they turned on those ETs that visit us in the past. And then that's when they're like, hey, we got to cut this out and we have to come back when these civilizations are ready for us because the greed and the corruption was getting too bad. Interesting. Yeah. Dude, this is fascinating conversation. Um, yeah. See, I knew you yeah. spit out a bunch of stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next question. Come on. Keep them coming. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So was there anything else you mentioned the uh, the ETs and the negative ETs, the Draco and so on, was there any other type of connections with them? I know you brought it up again, but was there any, like why, because why are they here and why they're doing what they're doing if you had information with that? Well, that's the ultimate question. I mean, why, you know, some people claim that the reptilians think that this is their planet. At least that's what they're being told. This is their planet. So they, they don't even think we belong here, you know? Yeah. And, but the, but the irony is the irony of it now is that they need us to survive because they can't a, 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 allegedly there's some sort of sphere up that doesn't allow them to leave. So they need us to survive. So instead of escaping and doing this somewhere else, they're just going to you know, basically feed off of us until they finally just die out. Yeah. And to go off of that, when you mentioned feed, is it, like physical feed or is it energetic both both, both. okay yeah I've, I've been i've been told it was it was both well i mean like you got guys like johan fritz say that he witnessed in the in the programs you know take it for what it is but he said they would actually eat humans like these reptilians would eat live humans and then throw them in what they would call a regen tank and mm -hmm. then regrow them and then that and then eat them like that was their meal like that's how they survived up in like on a ship you know and but here they also it's not just physically yeah it's happening on the ground who knows what's going on with the children and the trafficking and what's really going on i don't even think we might even be able to comprehend it honestly i think it's pretty disgusting but i've heard uh that movie uh that I was telling you about kind of depicts some of that it's it's gross uh. but, um Surprised they let that movie air. <laughs> right. No, but because people won't believe it. It's like, it's like so in your face that people will think it's just like, oh, this is some crazy dude thought this up. I'm like, no, what if this was really your world? And you have no idea. But uh, where was I going with that now? Um, what was the question? What were we okay. talking about? Uh, you was talking about the reptilians and I mentioned it was a physical or energetic. Oh yeah. Talk about the yeah. physical part. I think it's both. And, and Aaron can go, I know he can get into the loosh and the loosh farming. And I mean, uh, they, they yeah. this is what they do though. Like every major that's episode five. <laughs> right they talked about that oh uh, yeah i haven't posted episode five that's why i was mentioning like it's interesting how you watch these videos in order and then how like you you see the connections between the two right so loose a bit to loose i mean even like our sporty like the roman circus they call like all the professional sports and and the stadiums and the arenas and all the stuff they're all designed in a way that basically like siphon energy into the ley lines so yep. whenever whenever mm. these fans are getting extremely angry and violent in some cases uh that's that's loose farming right there i mean they're, ah, they're that's all, interesting all day long they they constantly want us in fear they want us irritated they want us in a chaotic uh energy frequency so we can't meditate we can't relax and anytime we're doing any of that stuff they're feeding off of us. I've heard, I've heard different whistleblowers say, yeah, they'll they'll literally like park their ships cloaked, you know, above like a stadium or above whatever event. And then, <laughs> and then they're just soaking up the energy. Right. And, and then and wars, wars throughout wars. history. They would park yeah, it absolutely. Above, I can see that. Battles, same thing. Just what about football energy. games? Big, definitely football games. Actually, oh, yeah. football and basket, I think NBA might be one of the worst. If football and NFL and NBA, as far as like having elite owners of these teams who might actually belong to this bloodline. And I, I don't know exactly what's going on there, but there's so much Illuminati satanic symbolism in the NBA. It's unreal. It's unreal. And then even some of the players and what they're involved in, you don't even know who's who anymore. And even some of these big name football teams, uh, you know, they claim that a lot of the games are rigged and and blah, blah, blah. the Kobe Bryant death seemed like a like another ritual. That sure. was a ritual, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it looked like he was about to disclose something. Like he was about to say something. He, he could have been. Like. There, that's the thing. We're just left in the dark, you know, about a lot of stuff. And we're left. We're left up to. That doesn't mean it wasn't still a. You know. They yeah, yeah. Made it a ritual and also taken him out to not to stop him from talking. Dude, um, it was planned ritual. Helicopters don't crash like that. And then one cartoon that shows him crashing in a helicopter. Yeah. Oh yeah. Prior, prior to it happening. Prior to it. You mentioned yeah. a cartoon, and I was holding back on this question, but why do you think they have to put it out there? What is your thoughts on that? Why do to they get have our to consent? Out? We like they have to tell you what they're doing, Aaron. You can get into this. Yeah, part. it's so there's a universal law, I, I believe, is the main reason that they they can't just do things to us. They have to get get us to. It's kind of like a loophole in universal law, essentially. So. They're constantly having to put it out there and then they do it. So they're like, all right, we told you guys, you didn't object and you let it happen and you keep letting these things gotcha. happen without, no one without got upset. calling a town on it and saying no, saying we don't consent anymore. So we we're, so they just keep doing it. And it's like, um, whether that's an actual, actually like something that's allowing it to keep happening or i think it's more of just in their minds they think it's it justifies it so if any other race comes in and tries to stop them or take them out they can they can object and say no 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 we're telling them everything mm -hmm. and they're consenting, so you have right. no right you know well it's free uh, will it's free will too and then yeah. also they're attempting to normalize their ways and also it's that just like they're trying to normalize pedophilia right now, li literally saying that it's a, a sexual orientation now. They're saying that pedophilia is a sexual orientation, that liking children is okay because they, they know all their crimes are getting ready to be exposed. So instead of... instead yeah, they want to change the laws as well. Yeah, like the change age. the laws so they can't get in trouble, right? Yeah, and, and, and also another big part of it is, especially with that kind of stuff, is... Is programming us to to it so um you know especially the, the kids especially children and the kids because they're at that stage where they're still their minds are easily you know being programmed and they're they're constantly putting out pedophilia um sex you know satanic stuff left and right they want a hypersexual yeah so they're programming us to it's almost like it's like mass mk ultra essentially is is a big part of it too they're just doing MKL on a mass scale through the media, through movies and TV shows and everything else. Right. And, and even uh, even even us, like every yeah. all three of us here, are like succumb to the programming on some level. That we're not. Nobody is actually free from it right now. You know, we're all here and existing in these times. And and but and, when you're awake to it, like we are, you can you can actually make a conscious effort. Yeah, to navigate. To yeah, consent to it and to navigate away from it and to right. But yep. on some, I mean, on some level, we're all like susceptible to it, and oh, yeah. we, we all some have degree. to comply just because of the system, and the, we don't, we're, we're left with no choice. So on some level, we all comply and we all feed into it. You know, we know about all these companies and what's actually behind them and who's at the head of these companies and the horrible things that they do. But mm -hmm. what do, what do they do? They put them right there in front of you to where it's the most convenient thing. It's the most, it's the easiest way, the cheapest way. And we're all buying from Amazon. We're all watching yeah. Netflix. We're all doing and all this stuff, you know. TV, I mean, and this was, I think, done before the internet was even really a big thing. Like TV, watching TV for like hours on end literally um, puts your brain in a in a state of like hypnosis, essentially. So I don't know, I guess it's maybe theta even, right. um, where you're being really suggestible and you're, you're easily programmed subconsciously. So I'm sure, you know, YouTube so, and the internet, it's the same, same thing. Right. Um, so, so whenever that commercial comes on trying to sell you a cheeseburger or a chocolate <laughs> shake, you're going to go get it, you know? Yeah. So I know it, it works on my wife all the time. <laughs> yeah. It's worked on me before. <laughs> I've, I've straight up ordered pizzas in the past just from a commercial. I'm like, that looks good. Hey, I'll take a pizza, you know? Yeah, so imagine what they're doing with that, you know, constantly. Right. Just right. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, let's switch gears a little bit. Let's focus on the new earth. What would be your definition of the new earth? How would you describe it from what you um, learned? Man, this is a, 
This is another one. I'm just going to let Aaron take it away. He did so good on the older. <laughs> Aaron, knock it out the park. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> this seems more uh, like your question anyway, so. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, again, this is a topic. This is a big topic, and it's one that you hear various, you know, multiple different things from different people of what's what's going to happen, what it's going to be like, blah, blah, blah. Um, again, with all that, I don't know for sure what exactly is going to happen, but I do know we are moving into a new earth, uh, that a golden age, whatever label you want to put on it. Um, it's going to be, we're moving into a time of awakening of, um, the light ruling rather than the dark that's been for a long time and for humanity thriving and, uh, love being the, the overarching um you know essence of of our society and of our world and it's going to be immensely beautiful but um yeah so there's the whole dolores canon you know she talked about the the split right the 3d mm -hmm. and the 5d earth split like lit like basically two different completely different physical realities where like the people that are on the lower i guess it's like a timeline i i thought of it as a timeline essentially mm -hmm. where yeah there's like the lower timeline and the higher timeline and the higher timeline moves into the 5d earth new earth and the lower stays on the on the 3d that ends up very negative and you know basically goes down the cabal's timeline where things get really destructive and terrible transhumanism uh, right? yeah and a lot of people die and blah 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 and um but then there's the belief that no, it's not, there's not going to be a split. It's, it's, we're all for either um, a bunch of people are going to die and from the chaos that's happening now, you know, and um, those of us that are uh, left, those of us that are left will build the new earth and, and the, the dark rulers will be, will go away and um, we will create the new earth. And then there's a belief some people think literally uh you know there'll be like motherships that will take people off that aren't ready for the ascension that aren't ready for 5d to another planet to live out 3d um any of those are are just as likely i i don't know exactly you know some sound crazier than others but hey with what we know is was reality well, nothing's, maybe, nothing's crazy too crazy sounding right. to me or, maybe or, the, or not maybe the mothership thing is real in the sense that Okay, so this is confusing. Everybody wants to know. Like, we're like, okay, well, what happens to my pet? What happens to my family? What happens to this? Like, yeah. what happens? Is there a physical earth? Like, where does everyone else go? What happens to blah, blah, blah? You know, it's really confusing. Nobody actually knows. But uh, so let's just pretend like everybody's given, everybody is consciously deciding right now, one way or the other. Um, and it's like a test. We're being tested. I think this came from Suzanne Spooner or even Allison. I don't remember, but came mm -hmm. through a session like, Okay, if you voted for Trump or Biden, that was the first test. Like, correct. You yes, you correct. voted for Trump. Basically, that was like, okay, we know your level of awareness. Somewhat, you somewhat aware. Like, okay, you're not going to vote for. Or even if you just didn't vote. Yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Do, yeah. But if you voted for Biden, you basically failed the test because clearly you you yeah. weren't you're you're not at a level of awareness to see what's going on yet. If mm. you voted for Biden, I'm sorry. Like that's just the way it is. Yeah. And. The next is the jab. You know, you're Correct. giving yeah, you're I was about a literal to choice to put a DNA altering poison into your body that is going to cut off your God connection. Um, and, and if you understand that that's what it's doing to you and you steer away from it, that's your choice. If you don't know any of that and you just do it because you're complying, well, why not? It's easy. You just might as well do it. Um, that's your choice. That's like, okay, you failed test two. <laughs> so yeah. now, now what happens to those people? If, if any of the information is accurate, they'll, you know, they'll have a shorter lifespan than us, than the people who don't get it. Right. A lot of them are already dying. From right. And, and then let's just pretend that there's like, they are like the whole mothership concept of them being taken to another 3d planet. Let's just pretend that like that's happening on some level to where, they're reincarnating all of those souls are reincarnating onto another 3d planet just like earth and that old earth is actually already existing right now you know mm -hmm. and this planet right here 
is actually the one, not just the people, but the planet itself is going through an ascension and it's not going back. So this will yeah. no longer be a 3D planet, no matter how you look at it. So these mm -hmm. people, they can't even exist on this planet in the old world. So they, they have to literally go to this other planet, however that looks, whether yeah. it's an ET ship that takes them, whether they, they fail the test and then they reincarnate somewhere reincarnate, else. Yeah. 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 And I'm not saying that everybody who got the jab failed the test because I know people are forced to forced into it. I know like like it's not easy. People have to, you know, it's their livelihood, whatever. Job or you come down the viewpoint, like right. your viewpoint on it. Right, like, exactly. Oh my God, I need it. I need it so bad. Like I can't, it's not fair for me to say because what if like something happens tomorrow where all three of us have to get it? Does that mean we failed the test? No. But but is an awareness there, I guess, is what I'm saying. Is a correlation between the aware, yeah, right. the level people are at, and that, yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, I like. Are you consciously, you know, like, mm -hmm. if you just, I don't, if you don't know, then you don't know, and you're just not gonna make it, you know. Right. The details of all that aside, I, I do think the new Earth will be something that we create that will, like, over a period of time, you know, will. And with the technologies, the amazing technologies that will be brought out or a, a lot of us just creating it that, you know, look at how many times people have tried to create free energy and bring out free energy and different know, technologies huh? that get squashed by the cabal every time or they get killed, you know, so that won't be happening anymore. Um, Battery and, cars in the 80s got bought out. <laughs> right. Well, we'll, yeah, we'll clean. We'll use these to clean up the planet to feed everyone. No, there's not going to be people dying from hunger and um homeless people and and all the rest of it third world countries you know we'll we'll have i mean we already do have the means to <laughs> take care of all that it's just again the cabal is is the they're stopping that and they're intentionally keeping that in place so there will there won't be a planet that has all this suffering and and people that their needs aren't being met um, right. and well, we'll be we, able to create this beautiful place that we actually want to create live lives we actually want to be living do what we want to be doing live in loving communities you know it's going to be a planet where a place where um we're no longer in survival mode and instead yeah. of everybody right now we're people are like it's like survival of fittest that's what they want they want you yeah. to, they want you to think that everybody's out on their own competing against each other and uh, just to give a perfect example, uh, my truck, my truck battery died at like a month ago and, and, uh, construct our home Depot parking lot or something. And the people next to me were sitting in their car and on their phones. And I was trying to ask them for a jump, trying to ask them for help. Actually, my cousin was with me and he was the one asking. And the people literally looked and looked back and ignored us. Didn't, didn't talk to us. Didn't. Didn't, oh, just didn't acknowledge us at all completely ignored us for no reason at all they just didn't want to help us so that's what i'm talking about we're not gonna be experiencing that anymore where everybody's just out for themselves we're gonna yeah. be in a planet where everybody is there assisting each other and we're not gonna it's gonna be weird living in a planet where we're not we're, we're not like stopped every corner you know stopped at every corner because of some regulation or restriction or mandate or something you know yeah yeah it's it's you know that's all we've known to this point is is that you know the the control and the manipulations um and the poisoning and everything else so it's going to be finally no longer is it going to be this very unconscious place that's ruled by these this evil cults you know <laughs> which is what it's been to this point it's going to be like actually humanity creating what we want to create coming together as one uh for the most part i mean i'm sure you know at first they'll still be because no one's perfect obviously it's not going to mean we're all perfect suddenly and there's right, no right. there's no there's no bad at all anymore i think there will be some degree of that but much 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 less it's going to be a major transition phase it's going to be a major major yeah uh, i'm just yeah, looking forward to living in a frequency to where my body doesn't hurt there you go <laughs> no body no yeah. back pain Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm with it and everything else, man. Like that's I'm all. With you. Um, I did something to it yesterday, that's for sure. Right. So yeah, even Sarah, uh, she said something very similar. Like, you know, we're the ones that are creating it, and we're the ones that are producing it, and as a collective, the, yeah, you know, the new frequency, the new vibration. 
I was like, okay, that makes sense. So you kind of mentioned the jab as well. I don't know. Uh, Sarah did write a book and it, it reminded me of something that you was talking about. And what I thought was interesting is that, do you believe that we're trying to hurry up and work off any kind of karma that we ever created? Because one of the things that karma that we created was during the times of Atlantis, we had a very similar situation where they were mutating viruses, mutating animals and genes and so on. So, so very similar to what's going on then and what's going on now. And one of the things was that we're trying to do it better this go around. So it's like our second opportunity to do it right. Do you think overall, like we're trying to hurry up and work off karma? That's why you see a lot of craziness go on, whether it's political or so well, on. Well, I don't know if we're trying to hurry up and work it off, but I think we're paying it off. I think, I think it slaps you in the face right now. Like every little white lie comes back to haunt you. Everything you do is going to uh, come back to haunt you. I mean, perfect example. I got caught up in some social media drama uh, like last week or something. And I, something I let myself stoop down to that level. And next thing you know, I'm caught up in this drama and I'm getting attacked by other people. I'm like, you know, this is exactly what I deserve. This is what, what do I expect for let, getting involved in this petty shit? You know, it's a, it's a perfect example of karma. Like this is what's going to happen where Angel, all right, Aaron, how'd you say it? Um, where your energy goes, where, where your that? Attention, energy flows where your attention goes. There you go. Energy, yeah, exactly. So it's a perfect example of karma working in real time right now. And I think everyone, we're in a beautiful situation now that where we're given an opportunity to heal that ancestral trauma and all the karma from past lives and stuff, because we have all of these people stepping forward that are learning these abilities that can help us. And I think that all the karma that needs to be paid off right now is being paid off um, by the right people uh, not everybody's going to be aware not everyone's going to know how to do it or they're subconsciously doing it just by existing the end yeah <laughs> <laughs> agreed <laughs> <laughs> love it love it so yeah because uh it, it it makes you wonder like if we are trying to work off all this karma, you know, from like everything that we've done in our past, you know, and you kind of see some similarities that ha that's happening now to what's happened in our past, whether it was a certain war, a certain event that happened back then is kind of like, hey, let's hurry up and solve this, make this better so we can make things better in the future. Right, right. Yeah, I think it. it I think it might be all of the above. There's probably, I mean, there's a whole hodgepodge of things happening right now. And it's it's going to look different for every single individual. And we're all here for different reasons, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm here to fight off attacks from reptilians. Aaron's here to sit in his light body. And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so who, who wants the light body? You or, or Aaron? Aaron? Oh, okay. He says, yeah. <laughs> what, what dimension are you trying to get to, buddy? What dimension? Party in 5D. Right, yeah. Party there. He's, yeah, that's, he's partying in 5D. I love party, it. Party partying in 5D. Um, <laughs> this would be a great question for y'all to answer because uh, you, you're in both communities. And uh, for easy description or definition, the rabbit hole community, and also you're on, you, you tap into like the light worker community as well. And one of the questions I bring up to certain practitioners is that you, you hear both, you hear certain terms in both communities. So whether it's someone under hypnosis or someone that is reading, you know, certain things uh, that is posted, you know, by the number 17 or something. Mm. So you hear God wins dark to light, go through the darkness to get to the light. Uh, what's good for one is good for all. And it kind of reminds me, maybe it's related. Where we go one, we go all. Is there, do you have any thoughts of like why there's so much similarities between the two? Is it because they're bringing it up for a certain reason because there's truth to it? Or is it because a certain individual is hearing these things and then they're just relaying the information? That's a tough question. I, I don't actually know. I don't know. I, I can speculate, but. Sure. Thoughts. Well, well what do you say? That who's. When you say they're bringing up, who do you mean? 
uh, certain clients under hypnosis, uh, oh, okay. QHHT sessions or B BQH sessions. Okay, so you're, you're asking if it's like subconsciously like them, like they already know about this awakening, this transition. So that information is coming through. Yeah, that and sometimes you hear like, oh, I don't know nothing about this. What does this mean? You know, like it just comes out of them. But it's, it's very interesting how there's some similarities between the two terminologies that is being used. Okay, to answer that, I think both are possible. I think probably on some level, like, so you, you, even though you're under hypnosis, you still have a lens. You still have a lens and you still have, I don't know, you, you're subconsciously we have all this information that we don't even, we can't always tap into when we're conscious, right? But under hypnosis, it's there. We've heard it before. So now it's coming out through the session. I think that could happen. And I think sometimes like, People might not have any idea. They, they might not be aware of any of the information that's coming through. It might, it might be brand new information to them and everybody. Um, it just depends on the person and the session. Gotcha. I, I really don't know, but I think it's a little bit of both. Okay. Yeah, because sometimes the higher self would bring up certain terms. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. I heard these terms once before discussed on certain YouTube channels. And I'm like, hmm, that's interesting that there's a certain connection between the two so it, it makes you wonder <clears throat> right right yeah no I, I it's it's good because a lot of times a, a big complaint actually that i've heard people who aren't happy with hypno with their session is they think that they like like they don't know if they made it up or not right yes yes so it, it's really you just got to take all that information with a grain of salt you know and <clears throat> there's always there's always the possibility of both. So um, I don't know. Interesting. All right. Well, I'm glad I asked it. So with the new earth, is this um, any way to deal with the great reset? Is that like similar to similar is, is in other words, like when I asked this question to Suzanne, uh, I asked her like, is the great reset more for the new earth or is the great reset more towards the NWO? Well, I'll, I'll let Aaron answer that, but I definitely think the great set, the great reset, the one that's being the propaganda that we're seeing, the one that's being uh, advertised, yes, that is yes. the end. Of, that is the NWO. Yeah, that's uh, their set. That's their version of it, exactly. But I mean, yeah, we, you can call the awakening a reset. It, technically, it is a reset. But it's not the same thing that they're talking about. Aaron, you could take it from there. Yeah, you nailed it. It's There's two different versions of the Great Reset. There's the Cabal's version, which mm. essentially has just another name for the timeline and the agendas that the Cabal want to implement and, they, and the future they want, which, in my opinion, is not going to happen. Um, they're done. They're just done, you know, in the story. And so but, yeah, but but that is what they're pushing right now because that's what they want. That's what they're desperately trying to manifest. Um, so, so right now, yeah, they're very much obviously pushing it. The whole build back better slogan is like their slogan for it. Mm -hmm. you see them saying that every two seconds. Um, and they're really desperately trying to manifest their, their great reset, which is that very negative dark future that they want where they're still in control more than ever actually um total enslavement you know all the rest of it it's not going to happen but that's yeah, that's it seems like that's it would give them more, more control yeah yeah um and i would say there's another great reset which is the positive timeline which we're the one we're actually on which is essentially just another term for the, for moving into new earth uh would that be the transition from now to the transition from where we're at to the new earth i would you could call that the great reset but that's the positive great reset where yeah uh that makes you sense. know the financial system will be reset for sure very soon but a pot in a positive way where you know we eventually we won't have money we won't need money but we'll need a transition between what we have now to that we can't just go from what we have now to no money right it's not going to work um so it's going to be a reset to that to that positive financial system that's gold backed asset backed um crypto that will be a positive crypto xrp in my opinion will be used for that um and it will be a reset of 
the, you know, the whole system, essentially the whole corrupt system that we have now will be completely reset to a, to a positively oriented system that is beneficial to humanity rather than, rather than destructive and oppressive to humanity, which is what we have now. Right. Um, so yeah, that's, I, that's I think, I think that's, I think that's a gradual rollout, a gradual change though. Like, yeah, it's not going to be an overnight. Boom. Yeah. Oh, suddenly yeah. everything, it, it is going to be gradual right. to agree, but not, it's not going to take like hundreds of years or even decades. It's going to take, you know, I don't know how long, but it's not right. going to be like, well, we did an episode with uh, Loyal to the Foil called The Great Awakening versus The Great Reset. And actually, we actually broke this all down before. Ah. Uh, and um okay. Yeah, there's a it's not the same. <laughs> to put no. to put it simply, it's not the same. Right, and, right. And then it, it gets down to a lot of hard questions and details, like the whole our concept of a UBI in the new world, like a universal base income, right? Um, people are like it's, everybody's just going to be lazy. No one's going to work, going to want to work. And we're going to be like the UBI under the Great Reset where, is where the government can just cut you off at any moment if you don't Straight. comply. Straight yeah. They'll yeah. control so, everything. Yeah. So yeah. then there's another one where we would have to be under some sort of system that's not a government, like a council of grandmothers, like James Gillen says or yeah. something, right? Some kind something. of benevolent council. Yeah, right. So not- it, we would have to see a major change in power structure before we get a U- UBI oh, yeah, that we could trust. Because what will happen? What's going to happen? They're already they're already testing the UBI out in certain areas. I know they did in Europe last year. They gave everybody like a thousand dollars a month for twelve months, or maybe something, maybe a little more than that. I know that happened. Um, they're testing it out just to see how it does. Mm-hmm. But what happens is, oh, you don't want to get the jab, you're not getting paid. No, nope. you off. Cut off. And, yeah. and that's exactly or whatever, you know, whatever they can do, whatever they want. The whole credit score or uh, social credit mm-hmm. score that China does, where you don't, oh, you don't do what we want, boom, now you right. can't, you don't have access to like anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. But now then no one so, wants to talk uh, to you. <laughs> so and then people yeah. have a problem with, okay, now what happens if um, we get all these? So here's the thing. So if we just gave everybody the the money now, UBI now, it wouldn't work out right now. But what we're gonna need it because if you really, if we really do get like healing technologies, med beds and stuff, we're gonna lose a lot of jobs, a lot of jobs, and all these healthcare workers and all these people um, that are working for these big companies, they're gonna be without jobs. So that's when a, a benevolent UBI, I think, would come in handy. Because now these people literally can't do their job because the machine has taken it over, right. even though like we are the real med beds, in my opinion, like eventually we'll just be able to heal ourselves. And we won't even need a med bed, but uh, that'll be a transition technology also. You know, I don't well, know. We already can essentially. Right. Yeah, actually, we already can. That's the, that's the biggest already. secret. You right. know? It's almost like the biggest disclosure is the disclosure of who we already are and our own abilities. It's just we haven't been taught about it we haven't been taught that's what i was about to say we weren't given the information we weren't or the tools or the yeah that information is being taught to people right to the masses and we'll be able to mass on a mass scale actually be tapping into our own natural abilities that we already have we already have them now yeah Yeah. but it would be nice to live in a world where like um you don't have to work because of something like that and maybe we all contribute so many hours a week or whatever. It's a community. It's all community, right? Yeah. And you can you have time to uh, work on your talents and do what you want to do and your passions and everything like that. At the mm-hmm. same time, there might be some currency or something um, that might still be needed, but you won't have to live in survival mode. You'll have this currency to do. Maybe you'll be able to travel to another planet with it or something. You yeah, know? I think the currency, the new currency will only be needed until we get to a point where enough of the technology gets released that it's it becomes just obsolete and yeah, yeah, to exactly. have a currency, right? Yeah. Right. We can just have replicators and free energy and then why do you need money at that Absolutely. point? Absolutely. I, th- I think as long, even if we can just get rid of the political money corruption, you know, that, that would be a big win right there, you know? <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Right. So here's uh, an interesting thought I would like to get your opinion on. So we kind of brought up a little bit, but I pushed it off to now, but I would like to pick your brains on it. So the elites that we like to call, do you think 
that they are reincarnating into the same families over and over again, the same bloodlines as well, over and over again, reincarnating. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. That's what Laura Van Tyne talks about a lot. Um, this fourth dimension needs to be cleared up. Like she said, the, like the whole term clean up on aisle four is like, like a metaphor for clean up the fourth dimension. Like it, like they've been trying to tell us the whole time, like we got to clean it up because yeah, this bloodlines, they're all reincarnating back into the same bloodline. And that's how they control. They, they have a stronghold in the, in the fourth dimension and here on earth. So if we can transition those souls. And so even, even people's like, like you or I essentially could be hijacked in the fourth dimension and, and like, reincarnate as in one of these elite families or something so you, we have to keep it cleaned up so that doesn't happen and all these souls that are trapped get them to transition to out of there and mm -hmm. get this to get it to be like a healthy place again well and she also said even just us even just souls that like get traumatized in, in their lifetime or a, mm -hmm. whatever kind of trauma they endure and then what happens is um they're, they're reincarnating without the without the healing that is necessary and then they're incarnating as an already damaged soul and then and then what the happens is more damage in that it? lifetime they reincarnate again and again and then it just keeps getting worse and worse that's why people seem to like why did somebody grow up to be a serial killer or somebody grow up to be a rapist um, or, like seemingly for no reason oh that's or, how they would yeah you know. or, or she uses the jeffrey epstein example like yeah. his soul isn't cleared out of the isn't transitioned it's going to be reincarnated and then literally a pedophile is going to be born pedophiles yeah a pedophile is going to be born it's going to be in it's going to be in that person and that's it, why it I makes sense with the pedophiles it's almost like they they their energetic like the energetics of their soul is so depleted that they have to get that energy from like as sick as it sounds like that's, yeah that's what's happening there i believe and that's why there's so many of them that's why it's so widespread because of that, that mm, right it's like a it's like an actual like um what am i trying to say not a currency a food source you know yeah yeah um and a yeah. currency unfortunately oh. the, the adrenochrome all that stuff but, but why and why are so many of the the elite pedophiles that's another big question it's rampant it's when it's all rampant through the elite right there it's almost like they're all pedophiles right well what when we know about the whole energetic feeding well that's that's why because they're literally there's something about um, the children. It's like more of a pure energy and it's much better. They, they prefer that. So they're getting that. They're basically parasiting off children. They're getting that. Yeah, it's know, an innocent. To talk about, but it's, that's, that's right. absolutely why. There's an innocence there. It hasn't been tampered with, hasn't been programmed. It's pure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fairness. Well, we've all seen like videos and uh, videos and footage of like children or we've even seen in real life, like, children who are just like little shits right um i watched a video of this this kid who could barely walk like three times in a row he slashed his parents tires on the car what? like he like for some reason this kid is just like evil like where does that come from but that's yeah. like unless it's one of these souls that was born into this body right exactly <clears throat> it's not just <clears throat> You, you never know. Like people say, we're all born innocent. Maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, there, that's it's interesting. A soul. Exactly. It's a damaged right. soul that hasn't been restored. Um, what Laura, Laura would talk about, like what we're supposed to, when we die, move up to like 5D essentially, which is like basically like a heaven realm where our soul gets restored. And then if we want to reincarnate, we can, but we don't have to. But what's happening is souls are getting trapped in the lower 40 where all these negative entities are and they're it's almost like they forced us to keep reincarnating without that healing so uh, you know we're not we're not gotcha or we're not getting healed and that you didn't of course you didn't have time to relax you didn't have time to take a break heal they're, they're on a it's soul level so literally it's like and they're and of course we're memory wiped when we reincarnate we're not remembering our past lives when we first you know we have to like dive into that to retrieve it but we're not we're all just thinking, oh, this is the first time I've lived. Right. Absolutely well, untrue. But there's also the, the opposite, right? All these like um, rainbow children, indigo children, star child, star children, yeah. whatever you call them, star seeds. They're being born like with memories of their past lives and they're tapping Audible, into shit yeah. 
And there's a brilliance level of, in these children that I'm sorry, like I like I don't know anybody that was that smart whenever I was that age. Like we're seeing yeah. these kids like with this like insane IQ already, right? The, uh, the, it's like the recent wave of them. Like yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah they're very already tapped in and at a very high level. Well, there is a there's a video of this one kid who was um I forget he was five maybe and he knew how to pilot a plane. He knew everything about it. Like uh, he was like talking to a pilot and he was like telling the pilot like what to do. And, yeah. 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 He knew everything about piloting a plane. Everything. Like details that uh, you I could never heard that. Yeah, details that didn't you could never a, know. Didn't he have a past life as a pilot? And he must have, yeah. But it's just two. There's, there's, it's been documented that there's been many kids that, and this has been like years ago too, where they, they had somehow those memories didn't get erased, at least from their previous life. And they would talk about it and their parents, you would just think, oh, they're being cute. But then they'd say very specific things that they could not possibly know, especially at that age. Right. And, and then they would look it up and sure enough, that was a real person. And that was a real, you know, like, it's, this is documented. And uh, there was a guy, there was actually a guy that did like a scientific study. He did, I think it was 3,000 kids that he documented. They, they described their past lives and, and there's historical records of those actual people that they, they just, these kids described. Right. right. Um, and they go to locations and know how to get around yeah. and, and everything. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I heard in the future that's yeah. going to be more and more um, common. Like you're going to hear more and more of that stuff happening. In the right. Mm -hmm. You're going to wake up and remember where you're going to be born and you can remember where you hid the money under that tree and they're going to <laughs> yeah. go get it. Like I, I what is that it. bank account number again? <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's fascinating stuff because if you think about it, you know, like you mentioned, one kid knew about how to fly an airplane, you know, another one knows how to play the piano, the right. guitar, the violin, and so on. So it's it's pretty amazing. Let's see. Uh, did y'all have any thoughts on uh, if you had it from any of your interviews, the wave of light, if that was brought up in anything? You're talking about like the event type of wave? Yeah. yeah. Some people will link it to the event and the wave. Right. I actually experienced that. Um, during the time in 2018, whenever we all were expecting something to happen, mm -hmm. I fell asleep on my couch and it was so real what I experienced. I thought, oh my God, like it's actually, I couldn't believe that it was actually happening. It was a huge wave of light that, that came through my living room. It was just solid white. And I was like weighed down. I couldn't move. I was just like weighed down to the couch. I couldn't move. But I was just thinking to myself, like, holy shit, it's happening. Like, I, happening. I didn't like, it's you know, real. part of you like it's, it's, it thinks, okay, this, maybe what if this never happens? It's never going to happen. And it turns out it never did happen. But um, maybe it did happen for certain people, certain individuals it, on another level. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, that's what I think. It's right. And it, more of, it, it happened. Like, it was the most real experience. I woke up. I didn't know what the hell happened. I didn't know. I was like, what? the fuck just happened like I, I didn't know what was going on i was like how did i get here like it was i was like lost i remember but i, I just remember like sleeping on the couch and waking up and seeing a, like this wave of white light just come and engulf me and it felt like i was just being pushed down weighed down i couldn't move and uh, i wow. thought this is it this is happening you know and i wonder I if that was like the, the the solidifying of the high time the higher timeline right like the right something timeline. like that something like that but, yeah, you know, but then up. I woke up yeah. from my, I woke up from that experience and I was like, oh shit, I'm just, it was just a dream, but it wasn't a dream. It was way too real. You know, I was going to ask you, you sure it was a dream? <laughs> no, but that's like, when you first like wake up, that's what you think. You're like, oh shit, that was a dream, you know, but I don't think it was. But who it's knows, maybe, real. maybe it will be a physical, actual way, you know, thing that we all sure. share at some point. I mean, I don't know. They're Maybe. expecting something. They have all these underground bunkers built, apparently, like, in the 40s and well, 50s. Solar flash. Yeah, solar flash. Big. Like, in the yeah. 40s and 50s, they they were, like, 
seeding humans on other planets in our solar system, like what they would call breakaway civilizations. And allegedly there's other Earth-like planets out there that are like at the same technological advancement as we are and, and everything. It's like a mirrored Earth. And they said some of the, even some of the cities mimic the cities here. Like we could be dropped off there and not know that we're not on Earth, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been preparing to preserve the human race in, in the event of a solar flash. And then now that Tom Hanks movie just came out, Finch or whatever, he's like the last survivor of a solar, a solar event. And he's oh, like, really? yeah, and it takes place in St. Louis, actually. What? Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. <laughs> so he's the last survivor of a solar event and like it's just him and this robot and they're like and then i don't know i i didn't watch it i just i just read about it but it, apparently it takes place in st louis oh wow I know, but yeah. like like they're seeding the consciousness with this stuff that's my whole point mm -hmm. like they're are they expecting some sort of wave like is it really gonna happen you know well yeah and according to certain you know ssp whistleblowers and other whistleblowers they said oh yeah everyone on in the you know the secret compartmentalized uh levels that are in the know about the, the all that stuff They're like they all know it's coming but there's different even within that though there's different um beliefs of what it's actually going to be what the solar right. flash. i don't it, think anybody it, knows like, yeah. a physical solar flash that burns up the whole earth and kills everyone or just an energetic one that you know causes some of us to ascend and then the, you know some not but well i i do know this the sun's been major majorly active lately i mean there's been all kinds of cmes and and stuff you know yeah that is true and and our consciousness is linked to the sun the right. sun is a portal the sun is a portal that's what it is so right and uh, sensitive oh, people yeah. feel that energy i mean it's like got me all wired and weird sometimes you know it's just our planet is linked to it you know as well so it's like, yeah, the plant, like basically, yeah, the the sun is getting more active. So that's a sign of like the higher energies, like I talked about earlier coming in. And there's actually every planet in our solar system is heating up. And David Wilcott goes into all that data. And it's actually NASA's own data that they have, or that they at least used to have available. And he just tied it all together. And it's like, look, you can like see the pictures of a planet throughout the years getting like the storms getting bigger they're getting hotter and more active well that's because of yeah uh, and, and and that's why the climate change is actually happening it has nothing to do with us you know us messing up the it's like yeah we're polluting the planet but that's not the yeah cause of climate it's, change. it's an actual right. it's part of this energetic uh, energetic and the, and the whole in the ozone layer was from them doing their whatever yeah. operation project it was they were doing yeah. nuclear they went out on us too of course atomic bomb testing in the upper atmosphere and mm -hmm. they literally blew a hole in the in the ozone layer and then they blamed it on us yeah that's yeah. what they do yeah it's all y'all's fault they, they have up right. the planet and then oh, they yeah, say, the oh, you i wish i read that's that's a legitimate operation that you can actually research i forgot the name of it though it happened right around the time, right after Operation High Jump. Um, well, I forgot the name of it, though. But, yeah, gotcha. they were doing nuclear bomb testing in the upper atmosphere. I believe it. <clears throat> you give us technology, we like to do a lot of experiment with it. So do you find that the sun is getting brighter? Because I was mm -hmm. noticing that the sun was brighter, and I wanted to get your thoughts on it um that's a good question it, I, I, it feels brighter and compared to like two years ago you know yeah. and that's the thing i was like man i noticed i was leaving work i'm like man it is getting brighter and brighter out here you know it feels hotter than it used to from like when i what i remember as a kid right it's so like in the summer day when you're out in the sun it mm -hmm. feels like it's just hotter and and it looks more white now than it used to it used yes to be more yellow right yeah I, I agree with the white part i agree with the yes. white yeah that too and that's what i was kind of getting at by it being brighter but yeah 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 less yellow but more white no. i don't actually know i mean i i haven't noticed it being like extremely bright like brighter than usual but wider yeah mm. gotcha all right wow we're doing pretty good so dna uh is there any changes with dna that's gonna need to happen for the new earth yeah, it needs to be activated. <laughs> I think it's already happening. Right. It's already right. Happening. And uh, uh, 
Well, one of the experiences I had, they explained to me that they were working on, they were infusing crystal into my spine, basically, um, like energetically. It wouldn't be measurable, but like energy, some type of crystalline energy. Oh, into like my sp- crystalline energy. Yeah, because we're going from carbon based to crystalline, you know, beings. Yeah. So, um, which would therefore affect your DNA. So, and they, the message that came through was they're doing this to basically everybody because our, our bodies aren't going to be able to naturally handle the transition. So we are getting help in, in our sleep, basically. And I don't know if that's true for everybody or not, but that's just what came through. Gotcha. You had a session before, a QHHT session or something similar? No, that came through. So I had an experience one night. It was totally wild. I've told it before, but I was basically, I found myself on a ship on a table being worked on. And uh, without even, I had a Reiki session already scheduled and my healer at the time, like while she was working on me, got this whole vision of me the on a ship being worked on. And she was like talking to the beings working on me and they were telling her what they were doing to me. And she relayed the message to me. So that's, I mean, take it for what it is, but that's where that information comes from. Okay. That's interesting. No, I heard that once before, even in like uh sessions in like uh Dolores Cannon's books, you know, something similar. Right. You know? yeah. Um yeah, that that's not unheard of. That one lady, she was at a, a hotel and uh in the book she was like levitating and then come to find out what was happening, she was in another realm. Her soul was in another realm getting worked on energetically. And when the housekeeper walked in, it freaked freaked her out, you know, because the lights were flashing and everything. So she was like out. And then she always wondered what that was about. So, you know, it's could be true, could be done. Yeah. Uh, who knows? I I don't doubt that we're all being tampered with for good or bad. On yeah, some and level, I, and I hear our, our uh, inactive junk DNA is being activated uh, yeah. as well, slowly, you know, being being activated in us as well. So, so uh, there's that too. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. To do, I mean, that's part of it. Like you can't have. The, this transition without our DNA being activated. Yeah. That's, exactly. that's, that is the transition. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Interesting. Do y'all think y'all are considered old souls or new souls? Definitely old soul for me. Yeah, definitely old. Oh, okay, Aaron, I thought you would be a new soul. <laughs> think I would be a new soul? Yeah, I thought you was the well, new soul. We well, did. Maybe to, maybe to Earth, but... I'm de- uh, I definitely know I'm not from this planet, and I think I'm an old soul. I gotcha. I I, many, many lives. Well, in, in that case, we're all old souls, but I, I would I would say yeah. as far as Earth goes. As far as Earth goes, then yeah. Probably not. I definitely think I am. Aaron, we had that one lady. Remember, she, she did a reading on each of us, and she said that she saw you as a walk-in, actually. Oh yeah, like, yeah. That's like right. we don't know, like we don't know if it's oh, true or not. That's interesting. But um yeah. it, it makes sense to me. I could see that. Right. So at some um, point as a child, I guess is what she means. Like I I Or walk. or at the moment of your awakening. Of, you know, oh like, yeah, yeah. Could like that's like that to me is that's when a walk in would happen is like when you have an awakening, like something yeah, changed. But, well, or it could be like like Matthew Mornian talks about. He doesn't. He calls it a like soul braiding is what he had, and that was yeah. the moment of his awakening where he said like <clears throat> a higher aspect of him merged with his incarnated soul or something like that. So maybe right. it was something along those lines. Could be like that stuff's all fascinating to me as well, and it's like it's all uncharted territory. I really don't know much about yeah, it, but, but it's uh, it's interesting. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. I was just wondering. I was just I think, wondering. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've always felt like the, the, there are certain eras in history on Earth that I'm just so drawn to. I'm like, I, I know I've had a past life in this area or in, at this time because mm-hmm. there's no way it doesn't make sense for things to resonate as much as they do. And uh, and even like, even as late as like the 70s and early 80s, I swear, like I had a life like right up to this one they say like so that's a theory too like they say it takes like a long time before you reincarnate right. but i've, I've heard other people yeah. say that it's like immediate 
Um, yeah, because everything almost, that's going on, they they right. try to come back right away. I'm almost like leaning towards like I had, I had a life all the way up until like 1985, and then reincarnated in '86. Like, yeah, good. And because there's so many things that from that era that just like feel like home to me that it doesn't, I don't understand. But yeah, so Not I would say I'm an old soul. Could be true. I wasn't too sure if you ever had a session with uh, anybody that. Uh, um, a, a practitioner or whatnot so that's why i was asking yeah i mean i've as far as having past lives on earth yeah if you ever had yeah a I, i've definitely explored some past lives on earth before okay in some sessions yeah i get you know there those are all those are stories within themselves but gotcha uh take forever <laughs> that'll be the second one right <laughs> So we're wrapping up pretty good, man. We do, we're knocking it out the park. So to circle back with the new earth, is there any recommendations on how to raise your vibration from your point of view? Um, yeah, just uh, try to not take things so seriously right now in a time of chaos. Um, don't let the external events affect you. And just remember how to be a kid and, uh, and try and revitalize, try and revive, I should say, that inner child. And honestly, like, yeah, diet, obviously we all know that. And like everything, diet is everything. What you watch, what you listen to, what you intake, who you hang out with, all the above. But most of all, I would say is relax. Like, don't let these times like get you down. Don't let it get you down. Yeah. Right. Always have a positive mindset. Right. Well, just don't take it. Like, just don't take it so seriously. Like it, it's, it might seem horrible, but it's literally it's it's not the end we're, of not, the, we're yeah. not victims right that's exactly and that's what you know that's one of the biggest control mechanisms they've used is like keeping us in the victim mode where things are just happening to us and we have no control over anything and um you know we're we're creators we're we manifest we do create our own reality um Ooh. yeah there is a collective reality that you can't you can't deny the, the darkness you know and all that but we do create our own reality within that and what you focus on is what you're going to create. Like that's, it's just that simple. Mm -hmm. And if you're living in fear, if you're living as a victim, if you're on, if you have unhealed wounds and traumas, you need to, you need to get those healed. And then I would say, focus on what you want to create, live from your true passions, what you truly love and live from your heart and um, don't get caught up in the fear and the, all the propaganda and the negativity um, you're just going to get more of that if you, if you, the more you focus on it, you're just going to keep putting energy into that and you're going to experience more of it. So do you want that? Or do you want to experience, uh, you know, what you actually want, you know, and that's, and that's kind of the biggest lesson of humanity right now is like, we need to create the world and the reality we want rather than for so long, we've been creating the, the reality they want by manipulation. Right. Right. Well, now, now we're moving into, oh, now we're taking our power back. We're creating what, what we want and what serves us. So, you know, that goes down to the individual level. So what do you want to create? And uh, don't get caught up in fear. Uh, have faith that everything's going to work out and love wins in the end and God wins in the end, you know? Right. And beautifully said, and a perfect example of, of that is like, okay, so it's, the goal is to get to a level of awareness to understand the big picture galactically down the politics, you know, what the hell's going on, even underground, like understand the big picture. And then you know how they operate. So what I'm seeing right now is all these people in this low vibe fear mode, sharing all these horrible videos about the jab and and this is happening here and this is happening here. And I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe this. Oh, my God. Like all this like fear and panic. And people are like, what do we do? This has got to stop. This is horrible, blah, blah, blah. And like they're just watching these videos over and over and over. And they're sending them to me. They're like, watch this. It's crazy. You won't believe it. I'm like, at some point, you just got to be like, okay, I know how they operate. I mm. know what they're doing. Actually, none of this stuff surprises me at all. Like you have to get to the point to accept that, yeah, this is how they operate. Like what's what's are you surprised at this point this is what we've yeah. been forever so understand this is how they operate and then ask yourself what good is watching all these videos doing for you 
is that benefiting you? Is it feeding you in any way? Is it, is, is it having any positive outcome on your life? You're yeah, feeding into that is all right. you're doing. It's good to be aware and understand yeah. what's going on. You don't want to be completely in the dark because then you can blindly comply without even realizing. So you want to know on some level yeah. what's going mm-hmm. on, but you don't have to feed into it and just dwell on that all the time. Like, like, listen, I've seen enough of these videos. I know this is what's happening. I know their agenda and I, and then none of this surprises me. And I'd be surprised. What would surprise me if you sent me a video that did surprise me <laughs> at this yeah. point, you know, I'm just like, this is how they operate. So yeah, get, to a, get to a level, get to a place of awareness to where you just don't need to look at that stuff anymore. Right. You understand what's going on. And then, and then you can go work on your own life and actually things be, get, things get easier you realize like your neighbors aren't such bad people. Like it's beautiful outside. Nature is amazing. You can go create Wait. reality right now. And it doesn't, and it looks nothing like what you see on TV or social media. Correct. Exactly. You know? Yeah. I'll go in my backyard. I'll be like, man, it's so beautiful and peaceful back here. And, and you know, but you, you go online, you're like, oof, yeah, a lot of chaos is going on. Right. Right. Yeah. But I think a lot of those videos, a lot of that stuff is really for the masses to see that and to wait. Right. It's good. It's good. Red pill and people. Yeah. Let it happen. But yeah. like, see what you need to see and then move Why on. Why do you think the media is saturated with, and this is how it's always been with constant negativity and constant uh, fear, you know, all of that, because they're trying to get us to create more and more of that feed our energy into that. We'll stop feeding it. <laughs> like that's why it's continuing. It's because we keep feeding it. So right. even if, yeah, you're awake to all these things, yeah, we are too, but we're not feeding into that because then you're going to, you're going to, you're feeding into the creation of that. And it's just going to create more and more of that. You're going to experience more and more of that and the effects of it more. So what you want to do is you see it, you acknowledge it, you say, okay, I see, I see that in response to that, I'm going to create this. I'm going to focus on this. And I'm going to, I'm going to focus, I'm going to create from my heart space Correct. what really resonates with me rather than living as a victim. And from what I see, the scary stuff that I see and, oh my God, in response to that, I'm a victim. And now I have to like scramble and do all these things uh, because I'm powerless. Uh, you know, that's the only thing I can do. And that's, that's the whole trap. They want us to think yeah. we're powerless to do anything about it, but we, we have to just scramble in fear um, or just submit completely. Correct. And that was perfect. And I would love to add something, not even add to it, but just say thank you very much for that last bit, because, you know, I got a couple of questions of like, hey, why are you creating this series? What am I supposed to do with this? What am I supposed to do with this information, which you just said was perfectly in line? You know, it's kind of like go within that love space and create your reality that, mm-hmm. you know, be aware, like Aaron. Uh, Tyler was saying like be aware of what's going on but don't get sucked into it you know because it's easy to get sucked into it but go within to create that reality that you want and look at the higher side of things so that was perfect right well in a perfect in a perfect example of being aware is like um, it's good to know what's going on because you can have somebody who is supporting like a BLM type type of movement thinking that they're doing the right thing yeah without the awareness of what's really the agenda behind that so and so if you're just ignoring everything you could find yourself supporting a group or something that actually has a nefarious agenda right right. so that's that's why that's why it's important to be aware because you don't just want to be blindly feeding into the stuff yeah right perfect well Last question on the menu would be: Did y'all have fun? Did y'all have a good time? <laughs> yeah, this was this, this was an, actually one of the most intriguing conversations I've had in a while on the show. It was really awesome. Thank Same. you, thank you. Yeah, I told you it'd be fun. <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> it did fly by too. And, and when you're getting that deep, yeah, you need two hours for sure. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I'll we talk. we covered like we. I mean, we went into some concepts. You know, covered everything basically. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's, yeah. it's easy to get swept up into it and start talking about these things. And, you know, and, and then I'm trying to take these questions that, that I've gotten from like other comments, not, not even on my channel, just like people are asking these certain questions, whether they're asking these questions in their sessions or asking these questions online on comments 
on you uh on other people's youtube videos so <clears throat> and some of them are my questions as well and that's why i want to get like all this information you know in the series your point of view this person's point of view and so on and then as someone's watching this they can say ah oh, i see the similarities i see what's going on between the two right no it's a great thing that you're doing here it's awesome perfect yeah. right yeah thanks right. for having us on man it was it was fun thank yeah you. thank you thank you very much and i'm gonna have links in the description of their youtube channel and the event that they are putting on in may i'm looking forward to it so this would be my third event like this so i'm pretty excited i already told the wife i said uh we're going to this and don't make any plans <laughs> yeah, awesome well we're looking forward to seeing you yeah looking forward to seeing you man Perfect. And I have one more question for you offline. So we wrap it up. Don't go anywhere. But I just have one question left. And to tell the audience, thank you very much. Go check out their YouTube channel. Like I said, they have amazing guests on. There. I was pretty impressed with the guests that they have on there. And check out their event and let me know in the comments that if you're interested in going to this event as well, because it would be nice to see some uh, familiar faces that I know from ESETI. So... Was right, there anything right. else you would like to share? No, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, to all the audience for supporting you. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Well, everybody, have a good night. Good night. Good night.